Hi guys, Nick here. The less presentable part of the unique life design. Um, I had a thought this less than sunny April morning to have a quick look around the garden and to tell you which species, tropical looking plants we have. I feel a little bit under pressure as uh, as you probably can tell, neither English nor Latin is my first language, but I'll do my best. The other part of it is that I'll remember the names now that I have to tell them, but let's give it a go. Okay, we're starting with a red cordyline. I think the official name that we bought it with was uh, Red Star. They, I've seen quite a few of those under different names and they look pretty much the same. But yeah, a red cordyline is good enough for me. Cordyline Australis Red Star. Next one is Siatea Australis. I bought it as a very little seedling and didn't have much hope for it as I had lost before one with a trunk. But so far it's doing well. It's actually opening new fronts this year. I guess we got lucky a little bit with mild summers. But yeah, I've just left it there and it's growing. Next is Chema Edwareo Microspadix, the bamboo palm. It's a very nice little palm. It comes in clumps. I've lost already a few of the stems, but there are always new ones that are appearing. And it, it seems to be quite cork hardy and it's looking nice. It doesn't take a lot of care. So yeah, let it grow. Next one is Dixonia Antarctica, the standard tree fern found in the UK. We bought this one as a little lock, maybe 30 centimeters, maybe a, a foot. So yeah, we just planted it, a lot of water and bit by bit it has been growing and it's looking quite spectacular. Actually, it's opening new fronts now, which is quite the sight. The next one is Trachycarpus Martianus Nepal. So it's one of the rare Trachycarpuses. <laughs> I used it <laughs> simply for the reason that this is quite shady part of the garden and I wanted a palm tree here, but mm, it needed to be quite cold hard, yes most of the trachycarpuses are so this one is growing quite well it's not spectacular but given time i believe it will be really really interesting next one is trachycarpus princeps highly sold it's supposed to be becoming blue it's very slow growing but it's doing well so, we are a patient type, we wait for it, I'm sure it will become a spectacular pound in time. Yucca Gloriosa Variegata. We put it here nearly nine years ago, I believe. It hasn't grown a lot, but it's been growing every year. And it's becoming more and more interesting. Standard Chamare Opsicumilis. We have left it to become a little quite bushy. The thing I like about Chamber of is you can get lots of different looks with it, as you will see later in other places in the garden. You can make it look bushy, you can make it look with a single trunk, you can show trunk or not show trunk, it's up to you. So I love this one, it's very unfussy and yeah, it's filling up the space here. The giant Xanta deck here. The giant cow lily it's growing well we don't have it for long so we really haven't seen it as big as it can as it can be we've seen we have quite a few of the standards on the deck here but i think this one will be much much better in time a little a little jubutia seedling f3 it's a hybrid between two pounds, Jubaya and Butia. So it's very little, 
it's slowly growing but it's growing so given time it will become a spectacular time but it may be our children that will be looking at it another species of trachycarpus unusual one I bought it from a reputable seller which simply called it the other side trachycarpus other side he knows what he's talking about so I tend to believe him that this is different to most of the other ones so we'll wait and see how it looks the blue chamariops cerifera it's like the chamariops but blue so there are a few more varieties that I will show you in the garden but this one is quite nice again it doesn't have a spectacular rate of growth it's not the sunniest part of the garden either but it's growing and it's looking better every year small eucarostrata behind it you can see another Dixoni Antarctica standard tree fern this one is a bit behind the other one in terms of it's waking up this spring but slowly but surely is getting there Butia odorata widely known as capitata in UK it's a great looking palm as you can see this one we've had almost since we began trying to get the tropical look so that would mean eight nine years um, it's grown significantly and it's looking even more impressive in the sun this is the famous big leaf t-rex the leaves are not big now it's just waking up this spring but this can become quite big and quite impressive as well so it's not a huge plant but it's much bigger than we both we've had it already maybe three four years and it's growing quite nicely and it will be spectacular soon behind it you can see musa basjo the japanese hardy banana again unfurling its first leaf in the spring it's one of the only two types of bananas that we can keep pretty much reliably in our gardens so yeah that's a small one i'll show you a bigger one later a bigger chamerops humilis much more visible trunk we will probably be exposing the trunks from this one much more as it grows so hopefully it will become in time it's quite good looking and impressive as it is but in time it will become a few trunks coming from the same place and it's gonna be quite lovely one of the most cold hardy palms in the world Rapidophyllum hystrix it suffered a damage maybe three four years ago and it hasn't grown this head the main head since then a lot but the thing is it hasn't withered either all the other heads are pushing up new leaves it doesn't require too much sun here and it, it seems to be looking even best when it doesn't have too much sun so i do believe that in time it will wake up the main head too but if it doesn't we have another four or five heads that are growing quite nicely the double-headed Tritrinax campestris <laughs> we bought it as a small palm and it's still a small palm you wouldn't believe it's been here like five years but it's very unfussy and it's growing and given time it will become much more interesting even now yeah I quite like it the double trunk Phoenix Canarians it is borderline called hardy palm you can see a lot of them around London usually much bigger size the smaller sizes are vulnerable but I've lost actually quite a few of those trying to grow them but I still like the look and you can find them quite easily not very expensive so we've put this one this one has been here maybe for three years and it seems to be doing well another Musa bus job behind it this 
This is a Yuka Goriosa hybrid. It has two heads now after it flowered and has been with us in here maybe nine years. So it's really really impressive and it's growing nicely. This is a Butia that is quite interesting. Uh, the best I was told guess to its species is a hybrid between Caterinensis and Yatai. It's we actually really like unusual palms and this is definitely one of those. It has very fine fronts and it does have the quite pronounced, you cannot see it now, but in, in the sun it gets quite quite bluish. So yeah, very very nice one. Here is the Zilirion Glaucofolium, I believe. It's been growing here quite nicely. It doesn't have a spectacular rate of growth as most of the, the palms in tropical like plants are, unless you get them at a very big size and some of them can be quite spectacularly growing. I will show you the cordyline later. Uh, so yeah, nice one. Again, it requires quite a lot of sun and that then becomes quite bluish. This one is Chimerops humilis etna star. It is a more compact form of the standard Chimerops humilis with a blue tint on the underside of the uh, leaves. I cannot see I've seen a lot of the blue tint to be honest with you so far, but it can be the soil or the sun exposure or maybe just not big enough to show all its characteristics yet but it's definitely a compact nice palm and it's growing as most of the chamaropsis are they're quite quite hardy and quite unfussy Sicus revoluta sagu palm it's not actually a palm it's a, it's a cicat uh, you can see the trunk here if you're lucky it will <laughs> It will have a flush opening new leaves basically once every year, but in our climate my experience has been every other year. So again, it's borderline hardy, you can lose it, but in London we've been lucky, we have a few and they've been growing slowly but growing. The big Eucarus strata. You will notice the variations, this one is not as blue as the other one that you looked at. So they can be looking quite different. They can also hybridize with other yuccas. So, but this one is definitely a beauty. Now it's been after the winter, so it's not looking its best. But a bit more sun, it, <laughs> it will be looking spectacular again. Trachycarpus fortunae in flowering. This is the biggest one we've got. Let me go back a little bit to show you. And yeah, windmill palm as known <laughs> as they're selling it. It's a lovely palm. It's big leaves and it's very, very cold hardy. One of the biggest plants we have is this huge cordyline that has been with us maybe, I don't know, eight years now and you wouldn't believe it but we bought it as a not such a big plant, maybe 60 centimeters, maybe 80 tall and it's been growing, I just like the place and it like the conditions and it's been growing like crazy and became this beast. Butia Yatai it's a different variation, different species of Butia. It has blue, more pronounced blue leaves and it didn't start well. It had problems, but it had bad winters as well at the first. But since then, actually establishes itself and it's been growing and all, all indications are that it's gonna get bigger than the other ones, that's the species. Daisy Lirion Wungissimum, as you can see, very spectacular one, I love it. Uh, it's been with us again quite a few years now and it's growing nicely and it's just providing this 
spiky look that everybody is looking for. Opuntia cold hardy cactus, never protected, has been outside now for I don't know, maybe five years. And it's been going, it's been growing, it's been flowering, and it seems to be quite happy though. Still can you can see a little bit of damage from the winter on it too. Sabau Resana. It's like all sabaos, it requires a lot of sun and high temperature to grow, so it hasn't grown much. This is the only leaf, the new leaf that you can see is the only leaf that it has grown in the past three years. But it's still there, um, which is which is a quite nice surprise. Hopefully, in time, as most of them are, it will get over its strope and it will start growing faster and we'll be able to see the, the leaves are becoming blue in time, I'm assured. Jubaea chilensis. The Moscow hardy feather palm. It's a beauty. We bought this one. Actually, I don't think it was half the size, less than that. But although it is known for not growing very fast, I really cannot have complained with this one. It's been growing quite nicely, definitely four or five leaves at least from the very beginning of the year, maybe even more lately. So yeah, it's become quite the beast. As you can see the trunk, I love the trunk. Euchre linearis. Again, it's a different type of euchre. And I left this one with a skirt, basically not cutting off the dead leaves underneath. And the look of it is naturally quite different from most of the other ones that we have. So I love it. It was a very small plant when we bought it and it's been growing here for maybe seven years now. At the back you can see another Dixoni Antarctica tree fern, double-headed one, which is quite interesting. I'm not sure if you can see it from here, but it has two heads coming from the same trunk. So it is... It hasn't been with us for a long time, so it hasn't established as well as some of the others. But it's still giving indication. Actually, it's unfurling new fronts from the small one, and the big one is on its way, I'm sure. Now this big palm at the back is actually quite spectacular. Again, the best information I could gather for it, and I tend to agree with it, that it's a hybrid uh, between Butchayatai and Aerius Fata. So it has this growth habit with a very long leaves, very slim, so it hopefully keeps it because it's very unusual, it's very tropical looking and I love it. Here is the next one which is Trachycarpus princeps hybrid with Nova and I bought it as a very small plant, it was invisible and it took quite a while to actually become significant. It's still not as big as it can be and as it will be, but it's it began its growth and it's quite the sight to see. I'm really excited to see what it will become. Now you can see in front of the hot tub on the left is Chamariops humilis. This is a different look, totally different single trunk. It is um, actually have a little grapes, it's growing, so this will be viable seeds for it. We've used it once to <laughs> produce new chamariopsis and then we gave them away because we have too many of them. On the other side is Butiagrus, Butiodorata, Butiodorata and Cross of Butiodorata and uh, Siagrus Romanzofiana. So it is quite cold hardy. But it's getting the graceful features of Siagras as well. 
so that's that's a lovely palm it's the mule palm it's very sought after and i'm really happy we found it for crea parmentieri very interesting one not considered hardy but i bought this one which i was assured that is actually coming from a mother that survived outdoor without protection in the mid ones and so far it hasn't disappointed it really hasn't got any winter damage in maybe i don't know four or five winters that it's been here and it's been growing quite nicely it's a lovely plant next to it trachycarpus nova the fastest growing trachycarpus it lives up to its name i'm quite happy with it and it's lovely it's already well i bought it as a quite small plant and now it's above the above the fence the bamboo forest is a combination of three types of bamboo uh, what you can see most is probably nigra the black one but it has got few statues aurelis or if i'm not mistaken and bisetti as well so it's a yellow and green uh, stems it's a lovely one it provides a nice green Nulina Nelsoni. It's another spiky plant. I love it. It gives you it gives you something a bit different from the other ones. Next to it is Butierius Fata. That is the one. Quite lovely palm as well. Sabao Minor. It's been here three, four years. It was a really small plant when we bought it, and now it's beginning to to get its famous big leaves. Still a long way to go, but I'm very happy with its growth. Here we have got a small agave, Americana planted, and this is yucca jewel. A long shot here, Xerox Island per I mean, <laughs> I would be very surprised if it survives, especially at this size. But it's borderline, well, hardy according to some people. So, and it's very small and it's got to be very low growth. But we need to have projects, long term projects in life. So, hopefully, so far it has survived. I do believe this is its second winter. So, this gives me hope and it is growing slowly slowly but it is growing so who knows maybe we'll have this very very interesting palm one day the biggest japanese hardy banana we have musabas jaw as you can see two stamps here they're producing quite a lot of pumps pumps that we we've used to actually put few more around the garden and it's very spectacular, it's still opening its first leaves after the winter. So yeah, in time, it looks really, really great. Butia paraguayensis, it's very rarely found Butia. It's more compact dwarf Butia. And it's slow growing, but it's been growing here for the past maybe three years. So it's it's a very nice one washingtonia robusta it's a great palm you can actually see a bit of winter damage on the new leaf in the middle but it's fast growing it will grow out of it and given the right location and protection well i don't really protect but the protection i guess is a little bit of shelter from the winds maybe uh, we've tried it on the other side of the garden which is the less sunny part and it it didn't survive but we have got one in the side garden as well one in the front garden and if they're the right size and you choose your location and care right you have a good chance of them growing up here is daisy lirion willery another daisy lirion Next to it, another standard Chemeriops, and it's standing next to 
these two cypresses, Italian cypress. They're huge. <laughs> I'm laughing because I remember buying them as a very, very tiny plants. I mean, they were. I don't think they were more than 50 centimeters high and very thin. And look at the monsters they've become in, I don't know, in eight years. Here, hidden between all the foliage, is a bow lisa. I don't think, well, not all of them actually has the lisa form, which is the interesting form. And I don't think this one will have it too, but if not, it's very small, it's hardly growing, but it is growing maybe a leaf a year. And I haven't provided it with much space either. So this was the space we had, but it's nice and interesting project. In the middle of the pond is another type of cordyline pink passion. Uh, as you can see, quite spectacular. So it used to be a big plant which sadly died in one bad winter, but it sprouted this one, which given a year or two, it became significant again, so it's quite nice. Here is another yucca. I do believe it's a hybrid between Prostrata and Rigida. It has much stiffer leaves and much longer than the other Rostratas I have, but I love the full look of it as well. Small yucca faxuniana. We used to have a bigger one that perished unfortunately and this sprouted. It was a pup, so we used it to put it here and it's been growing slowly, slowly but surely it's been growing here. This butcher was bought as Caterinensis, but I've been reliably informed that it's more likely to be a real sfata. Whichever it is, it was bought as a very small plant and it's been growing steadily now for maybe six, seven years and it's beginning to look quite, quite nice. This is uh, sorry, Trachycarpus manipur, also known as Urkuhulensis, I believe. It is a very interesting palm. It starts to creep at the beginning as it grows, so it goes sideways. You can still hear, still see probably that it's a bit going to one side. It's just its growth habit and eventually it starts going upwards. But yeah, I've had this one for maybe eight years now and it's been growing from a very, very small plant to this. So I'm pretty, pretty happy with it. Chama Edurea radicalis, very nice plant been outside maybe for six years now it has no problems i guess it's the hardiest of the chamoidurea another type of cordyline torbay does were as you can see a lot of yellow a lot of variegation which makes it quite distinctive and nice to have the daisy lirion microfluensis Again, both is a really small plant, but and it's been thriving actually. This is another very rare butia, butia archery. It's uh, very, very rarely found, and it's a dwarf one. I haven't provided it with much space because it doesn't really need that much. It's very, very unlikely that it will ever grow more than a meter high and it doesn't have much of a spread but it's a lovely little addition to the collection. Yucatum semiana, another long-term long -term project. Again, both very small and it's been growing slowly but surely and it becomes quite spectacular plant in time. Parajubaya turali lovely lovely palm I've tried the other two species too Sunkha and Macriocarpa I believe it was the other one 
but they were really small size and we lost them so the size do matter this one we bought a little bit bigger size and so far it has survived quite a few bad winters so really really happy with it another banana plant musabas joe another chimeriops humilis here is brachia armata the blue brachia very nice one next to it another sago palm next to it chimeradero radicalis yucca jewel and this is the the big one is Trachycarpus Wagnerianus. Next to it is the Butiagrus, another Butiagrus, the bigger one we have. This is Chamaerops Vulcano. I'm not sure if I've mentioned Chamaerops Etna Star, another compact form, and this is a yucca that we bought with no name. I'm not sure which one it is. I have Flacida guess and another one but I'm not quite sure. Anyway it doesn't grow big and it doesn't it's not too spiky so it's nice to be next to the to the path. Another banana plant here, another standard small size yucca elephant tipis. Quite interesting. And Brachea edulis. Growing quite nicely and two small types of bamboo in the pots over there they were, I don't remember the names but they were quite rare ones and they don't become too big which we wanted okay guys I hope you enjoyed this and you can find some useful information